Fabrizio Romano this morning has suggested in a tweet Newcastle are about to make a second bid for João Pedro, the Brazilian 20-year-old centre forward who currently plays for Watford. A few days ago we had a bid rejected by Watford, believed to be possibly 17.5 million, depends what you read. In The Guardian it suggested 20 million with 3 million pound in add-ons. But what do Newcastle fans think about this interest in João Pedro? He doesn't seem to be getting the hearts racing at the moment or firing up the engines. Uh, but also, we are still in the market uh, for uh, Goncalves Ramos, the under-21 Portuguese centre-forward, currently playing for Benfica. We may still be interested in him, but also there are possibly about three Chelsea players uh, we might be looking at as possible loan deals. Uh, there is Christian Pulisic, Conor Hudson-Odoi and Conor Gallagher. Uh, of course, we can only take two loans on in a Premier League club. Um, I do have a feeling that we might be taking two of those three on in the coming days but also we have uh, this uh, pursuit of Lucas Paqueta what's that all about but anyway to find out what the fans think about all of these um, transfer links I'm going to head into the strawberry and see what they think it's coming up So I'm in the strawberry and next to me I've got Dave Noble here and Dave Noble's the manager of Last Legs Walk and Football Team and he also operates in a league uh, run by the Newcastle United Foundation. Correct. Uh, if you didn't see I did a video a few weeks ago uh, about walk and football um, in aid of raising awareness for mental health it was Newcastle against Sunderland and Newcastle won, well done. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check the video out. It was a really good uh, day out, and I'll put a link in the description below. Dave, thanks for joining me on Tyneside Life. It's a pleasure, Eddie. Dave, so Newcastle United have been linked with uh, Joe Pedro, the Brazilian centre forward for yeah. Watford. We've had one bid rejected already. Uh, it looks like we're going to put a second bid in today uh, in excess of 20 million. Um, at first glance, it seems like an unusual interest that we'll have in Joe Pedro. What's your thoughts? Well, first of all, if Eddie Howe and Dan Ashworth think he's good enough, then that's fine by me. Uh, you have to question his goal-scoring record in the Premier League, though. I think last season he played just shy of 30 games, netted three times. For a striker, having that amount of games, you've got to question that. Although, the plus points are, he's young, he can be moulded into the type of player that Eddie Howe wants him to be. He's quick. Um, he's not afraid to track back, so my thought might be he might be looking at him not to play through the centre all the time. He could be looking at him to fill that sort of like wide on the right position. Just a thought. Um, so there's a lot of uh, Newcastle fans out there who seem convinced that we need a proven goal scorer, uh, somebody who's going to bang the goals in this year. Uh, do you think that's necessarily true? I think that Callum Wilson definitely needs quality cover uh, because when he's on form and when he's not injured, I would put him as possibly England's second best striker behind Harry Kane. But with Wilson's injury record, we definitely need quality cover. I mean, fair play to Chris Wood, he's a 100% effort merchant, but you've got to be looking at strengthening really because um, like I say Wood's a trier but quality wise I think we can improve on cover for Wilson um, if you want my personal opinion there's a young lad who plays for Salzburg Swiss international called Noah Rockefeller who uh, I think the club might want to have a look at he can play through the middle he can play as a number 10 he can play on either flank um, there's show reels of him on YouTube check him out he's a decent player I think it's easy to forget as well that Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe doesn't just look at the stats, for example, a goal scorer and how many goals he scores. Um, he's more of a he's a holistic manager. He looks at the overall um, performances of the player very and the much, man. Very much like myself, Eddie. Yes, turning these young lads into the team that they are today. They've yeah. got a lot of potential, I mean, bags of potential, and I'm, I'm looking to move them into the players that I think they can be. Yeah. But anyway, we're talking about Newcastle today, not last legs. <laughs> So do you think if we sound sang Jao Pedro would be a positive <coughs> attribution? Like I say, if he's good enough for Ashworth and Howe, he's good enough for me. And, uh, you know, I think that they are two men who have got a plan for the club. And if Jao Pedro fits into that plan, then 
that's good. That's a good thing. And talking of the finances as well, um, the the Newcastle United um, they made a bid of 45 million for Madison, which was rejected. So you get the feeling that their budget is about 45 million in this transfer window, which would put it at about 200 million over two transfer windows. Um, for a player like Joe Pedro, who's unproven, do you think the fat end of possibly 30 million is good business? It's a tough one because the question is when you buy a player it's not how much the buying club thinks he's worth that counts it's what the selling club thinks he's worth that counts um, but I think that uh, Newcastle have already proved that uh, you know they're not going to have the mickey taken out of them in the transfer market which is a good thing um, as far as 45 million being our budget I think it could be a little bit higher but I, than that but I, as far as the Madison deal goes, I, I, I just don't think that uh, Newcastle were prepared to have their pants pulled down over it. Well, of course, I think that, that deal's dead in the water now, yeah. but you've got an idea of to how far they're willing to go in this transfer window. Mm -hmm. um, so it links into a lot of speculation about Lucas Paqueta. Now, I'm going to say from the outset, I'll hold my hand. If I'm wrong, I'm going to hold my hands up and say, look, I've got this badly wrong. In my opinion, with the information that we have at the moment, it seems to me like this is a, a ghost pursuit fuelled by the media. Um, who have created an imaginary transfer fee of £33 million, knowing Newcastle fans are going to be like moths to a flame over this and it makes money for the media companies. None of it makes any sense to me. Um, what's your view? Because as well, if, 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 he, if we pursued him for £40 million plus, that's with budget gone and it misses out on one or two other priority areas. What do you think? Don't get me wrong, if... Lucas Paqueta signed for Newcastle United, I would love it. However, I think you could be right. Um, I think that if he wasn't uh, Bruno's best buddy, then... There You're stealing my lines. Then there wouldn't be all this, then there wouldn't be all this talk about him. Um, however, it could be argued, it could be argued that with Shelby being injured, we would need to look at... Um, central midfield as a possible priority but like what you and I were talking about earlier just before uh, we went uh, in front of the camera um, you're absolutely right in what you said you know if we signed another central midfielder that would potentially stifle uh, Elliot Anderson's um, opportunities and the club have made it clear that they don't want to loan him out so why would they want to push him further down the pecking order you know the Sean Longstaff in there as well he can do a job so you know while I would like us to sign Lucas Paqueta because he is a world-class midfielder I think we have to prioritize what we need and we need strengthening in other positions before we need to look at central midfield I agree and certainly from the the feedback I get through my videos a lot of Newcastle fans with this Paqueta situation seem to be bewildered, frustrated, sometimes even angry that we haven't uh, made an approach for him. And uh, I just think that the media can be quite unhelpful in terms of uh, these sort of speculative transfer links. I think that there's a lot of fans that are frustrated on social media, but my advice to them would be, look, since this takeover, we've signed the England right back, right? We've signed a Brazilian international central midfielder. We've signed uh, Chris Wood. We've signed Nick Pope, hashtag Nick Pope. Um, and if you think, right, 12 months ago, would we have been making signings like that? No, we wouldn't have been, you know. Uh, before these owners took over, could we have ever dreamt about finishing 11th in the league last season? No, we could have dreamt about finishing 17th and would have probably finished lower than that. So my advice to the fans that are feeling frustrated is just keep the faith, man. Definitely agree with that, that sentiment. My opinion is, um, you know, we've spent fat end of £160 million so far on two transfer windows. Mm -hmm. Within the context of the development of the club, we're a, we're a side that's looking to consolidate in the top half are we good enough to possibly get six? Yeah, possibly. But if you think of Newcastle United as we are pushing into the top six, I can understand the frustration, even anger. For me, I, I don't feel that. I just feel excitement and optimism because um, we're going to be a team that's, unless there's some sort of shocking developments, are going to be comfortably hanging around the eighth and ninth position. What's your view? I think that 
we possibly have the best player outside the top six in Bruno. I think he is outside, well, maybe outside even the top four. I think he's the best player in the league. I think a realistic uh, league position target for us would be between sixth and ninth. And I think that's being realistic. I think if we finish, if we finish eighth or ninth, I think that's been a really good season for us. I completely agree with that, Dave. Uh, lastly, we've been linked with two or three Chelsea players. What's your thoughts on this? I think the most realistic one is Hudson Odoi. Um, as a loan, as a loan, yeah. Uh, Pulisic. If we sign Pulisic on loan, that could be quite clever, because you know we're looking for a winger and a centre forward. Pulisic can play in both positions. He's primarily a winger, but he can play through the middle. So I think if we loaned him in, we could effectively kill two birds with one stone. Play him on the wing, he can cover for Wilson when Wilson's injured. However, if you were to ask me which of the Chelsea players were most likely to land on a loan, I would say probably Hudson Odoi. Dave, thanks very much. No problem. Some brilliant, some brilliant observations there. Thanks. So, lastly, how is uh, the Last Legs football team doing in the league with the Newcastle United Foundation? Hundred percent record so far. Already played for one four. Um, so. Uh, can't ask for more than that, really, can I? Well done, mate. So, thanks, Dave. Thanks very much. Um, and don't forget to, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'm just coming up to 20,000 subscribers. Hit the bell. On my 12-month anniversary. I'm blown out the water by that. So, thanks for your support, everybody. But don't forget to leave your comments below as to what you think about this current transfer window and how it's seemed to hot up in the last few days. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Until next time. Well, actually, I'll see you Sunday.